many of you spend most of your time swilling in complexity? Well, that's what we seem to have been doing for the last eight years at Festivals Edinburgh. It's been hard, it's been a bit painful, it's been frustrating, but we've, we've learnt to find ways of bearing the pain, of tolerating the complexity, sometimes of swilling in it with optimistic expectation, even relish, because almost always we find that that quagmire of complexity condenses into something solid that we can recognise together as a foundation to build on, or out of its muddy, murky, sometimes alarming depths, just one of us perhaps will find, retrieve a pearl of an idea that will give us clarity or will illuminate our future ambition. We uh, swill in complexity because it helps us to evolve. So who are we, this evolving we? Well, that's complex too. Festivals Edinburgh is the organisation that was created by the directors of, 12, of the 12 major festivals in the city to lead on their joint strategic development and to work collaboratively and with our stakeholders and funders and partners to try to make sure that Edinburgh remains and retains its position as the world's leading festival city. We are the organisation. The festivals are the members, they're the board of directors, they own it. I have 12 bosses. They are, we are, the Edinburgh International Science Festival, the Imaginate Festival for Children and Young People. We are the uh, Film Festival, the Edinburgh International Film Festival. We are the Edinburgh Jazz and Blues Festival. We are the Edinburgh Art Festival, the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, the Edinburgh International Festival. We are the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo. We are also the Edinburgh International Book Festival. We are the Scottish uh, Storytelling Festival and we are Edinburgh's Hogmanay. And collectively, we have 25,000 artists putting on 3,000 shows a year. We have a whole range of impacts, but essentially, and essentially to all, essential to all of those impacts, social, cultural, economic, is the fact that these festivals retain their own distinct, powerful visions and identities. They are complex. They have their ecosystems of artists and producers, of audiences, of funders, of communities. They have their own organisational cultures. They have their own, uh, their own businesses, their own business structures. They operate on completely different scales. Some of them have two staff, some of them have 30. And importantly, they are driven and they are led by very ambitious, competitive, challenging, wonderful uh, thinkers, creative thinkers and programmers. Essential though to their success and their ability to continue to uh, survive through what have been very challenging times over the last eight years was their decision to come together, to work together, to keep company with each other, to collaborate. Um, and of course, that involves swilling in complexity, in experimenting together. Um, that experiment uh, has taken a whole series of different forms, but uh, essentially what matters as much as the festivals carrying that experiment is where it takes place, because our compact historical city is the unique petri dish in which our festival culture has grown. The Edinburgh International Festival uh, was created in the wake of the Second World War in 1947 as a way of bringing the countries of Europe and the world together through culture uh, in response to some of that devastation uh, of that uh, terrible conflict. Um, it, from its very first moment, it, it was both a bold, a brave international venture and also a committed civic enterprise it was about bringing the best of culture to the city, but it was also, unusually at that time, uh, an initiative to bring tourists into Edinburgh. It, it was about bringing the greatest artists in the world into the grand civic spaces, the theatres and the concert halls of the city, um, and also about the, the cultural values associated with that, but it was immediately disrupted and enhanced 
by two acts of revolution, of rebellion, when uh, eight theatre companies who were not invited to the Edinburgh International Festival decided that they were going to come anyway. They knew there would be artists, they knew there would be audiences, and they came and started to take up their places in alternative spaces in the city and uh, started to turn into what was to become the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, now the largest arts festival in the world. And then another revolution was the Edinburgh International Film Festival. They wanted to bring film into the city at this time, an art form that was not part of the international festival either. And then following fast uh, uh, after these festivals, marching fast on the heels, in fact, of these first three festivals, the Edinburgh, the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo. And then over the last 69 years, we have another eight major festivals that have grown up. In, uh, in the city. Um, but these festivals, uh, again, what has been essential is the ability of the city to adapt to these festivals. The city has welcomed them, it's accepted the complexity and in fact the tensions that they represent when they sit here together. The idea of a festival as a a uh, vehicle for city marketing and branding has become very fashionable over the last 15 years. But what happens in Edinburgh couldn't happen anywhere else in the world. You cannot buy what happens here off the peg. As Joyce McMillan, one of our fabulous uh, cultural commentators uh, here has said, the story of the birth of Edinburgh as a festival city, an experiment with unintended consequences, is all about the essential unpredictable energy that emerges from boldness and also uh, about our city's, uh, our city's ability not just to fund and support, not that we mind those things, but actually to adapt to that essential energy. And that has been part of a long, slow process that has been instrumental in transforming Edinburgh into a, a, a world city once again. Now, Festivals Edinburgh is the next stage in that process, in that, uh, in that evolution. Um, as the organisation created by the 12 directors to lead on their joint uh, development, we feel like we're in an endless experiment, a never-ending experiment on ourselves as cultural festivals, uh, on, on us as organisations, on us as individuals, on our artists and our audience and the city that we inhabit and uh, animate. And the idea of an experiment, well, it's a comfort to us, actually. It allows us to be more open to exploration. It allows us to be more tolerant of our own failures and those of others, the failures and fault lines that we, we um, uh, encounter in each other. It allows us to invest in and to feel passionate about an idea or a project, but then also to uh, release it. Um, it it's also continues to be a discomfort to us as well. And we have to remember that a lot of it is about readjustment and analysis and redefinition. Sometimes it is excruciatingly slow. We collaborate, we swill in complexity, and we continue to evolve. Um, one of the unintended, uh, 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 one of the um, things about Festivals Edinburgh and its creation is that it also has un had unintended consequences. We've come together and we've worked on those things that we needed to in order to retain that position as a world leading festival city, even in some cases, I would say, to survive over the last few challenging years. So we've worked in areas like uh, marketing. Um, we have created collaborative cross-festival working groups in marketing and in programme investment. Um, and we've uh, brought together members of every single festival, so representatives from each. Each festival's voice is heard, whether they have two staff or they have 30 staff. And they contribute to our thinking and how we develop our strategies and all of the work that we do. Um, but we also then have a director of each festival or a, a chief executive chairing those groups and feeding back into our board. We've also created groups and then abandoned them, either because they're not focused, they don't have a clear purpose anymore, or sometimes because they're just downright dysfunctional. But wonderfully, we've also 
gone into areas we didn't expect to. We've created working groups, collaborative working groups across our festival in environmental sustainability. We've created new ways of working together around innovation because collaborative working is addictive, we found, and it's also infectious. Our stakeholders and funders have also found new ways of working with us. They've, they've invested in us as a, a source of experimentation. We're like a research and development function for some of the work that we've done. Painful though that is sometimes. Um, they've also pooled their resources in ways that they've never done before in order to support ambition, to allow us to stretch. And they've started to work together among themselves as a result of some of the projects um, that they've worked with us on. They have been part of the experiment as well. And they've also shared the pain because there has been pain. The waiting and the waiting and the waiting for what I discovered in a design process is called the surviving idea to emerge. And of course, we don't just wait. Collaboration is difficult, you know. Um, there, are, um, there are clashes of ambition. There are um, incompatibilities of resource. There are very strongly long-held opinions. There are periods of sporadic fear and risk aversion. There are debates about um, what, what does fairness mean? What is fairness? What is fair for one is not necessarily fair for another. I'm making funny noises. Is it my hair? <laughs> um, so yeah, there, so we also have to deal with this idea of fairness and of course competitiveness. And we don't want to repress that. That's also what they're uh, all about. And so we have had to find, we've had to, um, to create sometimes and then to adopt ways of navigating this uh, complexity again. Uh, ways of firming up a combined understanding uh, and agreement. Um, we debate. We debate rigorously, as you can imagine, with those very strong creative individuals. We do not make decisions uh, by majority. We make them by consensus. That means that any single festival can veto an idea or a process or uh, a project at any stage. But because they know they can, they don't. They stay with it for longer. They explore for longer. Sometimes when we have a new idea or a new collaborative working group, we'll put the festival that's innovating in that field in charge. Sometimes we will put the questioner because in questioning, and questioning matters as well, they will be involved in working with their, uh, with their colleagues to answer those questions, to bring up more and to answer those as well. We um, uh, we research and we audit. We have to try and get external objective perspectives because we want to swill in complexity, but not just in opinions. And then we pilot and we prototype because we want to test out and adapt before we roll out. We're constantly trying to um, assess acceptability and, uh, and deliverab deliverability. Um, and, of course, we jettison. We have to jettison things sometimes as well to make ourselves lighter. And almost always it takes at least a year for us to get to a place where we have something that is acceptable, that is trusted, that's embraceable, that's achievable. And when we get there together, that idea is not just okay, but is solid and bright and good. And good not just for us, but for the wider ecologies to which we connect and on which we depend. Thank you very much for swilling in some of this complexity with me. I hope it's also been good for you. <laughs>